How do you rough in a mini split? I've done a couple videos about roughing in mini splits. I'll drop those down in the link in the description. So if you want to check out other projects, this one is a little bit different. So I'm glad to do a video about the rough in, the process, the products we used, what we could have done better, what we could have done instead of what we did do, the layout, different options. So if you want to learn more about roughing in mini splits, definitely check out this video. Before we start, hit the like button, subscribe, and smash that bell. Ding! So you know what I'm doing. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and today we're going to learn about roughing in a mini split in this particular project. So we'll take a look at the outdoor unit, talk about the way we run the line sets, and then we'll go upstairs and take a look at the two indoor rough-in boxes and the line sets and where they're going to be hooked to the wall mount air handlers. Let's go. This is our multi-zone outdoor unit. It is a 24,000 BTU. So it's a two ton outdoor unit. You can have up to three indoor units connected to this multi-zone condenser. Sets on a pad. Pad's about three foot long, 18 inches wide and three inches in depth. These are really nice pads. And this right here is our line hide cover. It's four inches. We got a coupling right here. This is the coupling, and this is made by Diversitech. I really like their line hide cover, so their products are really nice. We've got two sets of line sets going into this line hide cover, and that's really nice because we could have used two, but that would have taken up more room. We can fit it in that line hide piece, and it just worked out really nicely. You can see it's going through the soffit up there, and it's mounted to the wall. We've got our disconnect here. And this is a non-fuse 60 amp disconnect and we've got liquid tight uh, conduit. We've got our little conduit fittings and then we're going to schedule 80 because anytime you're on the exterior, of course, you got to use schedule 80 when it's above ground. Otherwise, you will not pass an inspection. So we've got an LB here. We got our schedule 80 conduit. We got one hole clamps. That's three quarter inch EMT clamp. And then we got some five sixteenths screws. So really nice. They did a great job. Now let's take a look at the two tons max overcurrent protection. We've got a 25 amp double pole breaker that would power this unit. Now let's take a look upstairs and see how the line sets are routed to the rough in boxes. Right now we are above the garage. This used to be storage, so all this framing is new. They are gonna have two rooms and a bathroom when they finish, and we're gonna have two separate wall mount air handlers. We're gonna talk about the layout, talk about why we chose to install the wall mount air handlers, where they're gonna be located, what we could have done differently, so that you know what options there are if you do have some similar project like this. Let's go ahead and talk about the layout. This room we are in is just over 200 square foot. So it's 13 foot by 20 foot, a little more than 200 square foot. And that's where one of the wall mount air handlers is going to be located. You can see the rough in box. Give you a close up view here in just a minute. There's the bathroom. It's located in between the two rooms. And here is another room. And this room is 200 square foot as well. And here's where the other wall mount air handler is going to be located. And this is the rough in box. Now let's talk about my preferred choice of location for these wall mount air handlers and talk about the options that I gave the customer. I've done a lot of projects like this in the past and typically I mount my wall mount air handler on this side of the window or this side of the window. I usually like to keep it at least six foot high and I would probably mount it somewhere right here and I would measure just to make sure that it would fit uh, these 12 K's I think are around 30 inches, 32 inches. So it would probably fit right here. And this would be about six foot from the floor. Now this right here is only four foot from the floor. And the reason I like it right there is because one, I have more distance to blow the air. Okay. And two, I am less likely to hit an obstruction the higher I am from the floor. And this right here, whenever I spoke to the customer, I gave them three options. I'm gonna talk about those options. Option number one is I gave them the option to put it next to the window. And I explained what I just explained to you and my concerns about airflow. I said, you know, it'd be better over here because this has a shorter distance to blow the air. And of course we could mount it higher. 
Then the second thing I did was I gave them a price for console units. So console units, if you don't know what that is, I'll drop a video on the link in the description. And I'm pretty sure the title is what types of mini splits are there. And it's a video of me in a training lab talking about the cassettes versus the console versus the wall mount versus the ducted. And console units, they mount near the floor. So it would give me more room to blow the air and it would just be better for the application. Now, why did the customer choose to go with this option? They chose to go with this option because it was the cheapest option. Not that that's a bad thing. I would have preferred the consoles, but what I did to ensure that this is gonna work properly, let me talk to you about that. What I did to make sure that this works properly is we talked about the layout of each bedroom. And I made sure that, hey, if I center both of these units in between the walls, okay, centered, is that what's going to be in front of my units? Do you know? Is there going to be a bed in front of my units? Is there going to be a desk? And I explained to the customer that we need to make sure that we do not put an obstruction in front of that unit, that that air can be pushed from this side to this side efficiently. That way we don't have bounce back effect or we can minimize the amount of obstructions in front of the unit and minimize or just try to negate having a bounce back effect happening to our unit. So we want to make sure we don't have that. So I went over with the customer exactly how the room would be set up. That way I made sure where I needed to put this unit since I wasn't going to be able to mount it on one of these walls. And something that I got as a benefit of installing it here is I had a better place for my line sets to run to my outdoor unit and I got a better place for the drain and I'll show you the drain setup. If you have any questions, put those in the comments. If you have any advice, put that in the comments. Let me know what you've done in the past. Another thing that is in favor of this install is the fact that I do have the adjustable veins inside of the equipment so that I can direct the airflow instead of just straight. I can do one side of the equipment, blow it to the right, one side to the left, and that will give us more even air distribution and help us not to have the bounce back effect. So hope that all makes sense, and I hope you understand. If you don't, comment below, let me know, and I will try to do an extra video for you. If you'd like to see the final install and the wall mount air handlers installed on the wall and everything working i can do that for you so definitely just put that request down in the comments now let's take a look at the rough in box take a look at the drain and the line sets and show you how that was installed here is one rough in box centered right here again this is four foot high we've got our communication and power cable we've got our liquid and our gas pipe we have our drain connection right here, and you can see that it's a threaded to slip fitting. It's glued, and you can see that they've got some clamps on the other side holding that drain. So very glad our line sets, wire ties. We use wire ties, we make it look nice. And then right here, we've got a three inch drain, and we're running our drain right into that so we've got a three by three by two inch reducer and then two inch to three quarter inch uh, slip so we're able to run that drain line right into that pipe so we don't have to go to the exterior that's nice let's see what they did here oh look at that that is nice too so same thing three by three by two here's our other rough in box if you need information in regards to this rough-in box, I will drop a link in the description for you so that you can check out these rough-in boxes. They're really nice. They have mounting brackets so you can mount them in between the studs. And then we've got a couple of these knockouts so we can just cut this off and run our wire or our line sets in. You can see they just cut the back out so that was easier for them. And I think that was a good idea. Now let's talk about one other thing that we can do and that we're going to do with this project just to make things better. 
One other thing about the bathroom, you do not have to put a unit in the bathroom as long as you have a door leading from this room to that room, the bathroom. You can undercut the door two inches. You've got a bath fan, so between this indoor wall mount air handler's fan blowing almost all the time, especially during cooling, we got a positive pressure in here. And then we turn the bath fan on the bathroom, negative pressure, blows the air right in there. One thing we can do to make this project a lot better is we can make sure, number one, there's nothing in front of this wall mount air handler, nothing. No couch, no bed, no TV stand, no dresser. I wanna make sure that we have plenty of air that we can blow from one side of the room to the other. And the second thing is an access to work on the equipment, to get back behind it. What if we need to access the drain? What if we need to access the line sets? What if somebody ends up putting a hole into something? Can we get back behind the knee wall to access the line sets after the job is completed. Let me show you. So I explained to the contractor that we can put a little access right here, a two by two, two foot by two foot access right next to each wall mount air handler. And we can actually access the line sets or the drain just in case if we need to. We shouldn't have to access anything, but anything can happen. So with our wall mount air handlers, we'll be able to take off a panel and we'll be able to pull the drain line out of the hole here where it goes. See this right here? This is what your drain plugs into from your wall mount air handler to the rough end box. So we can take that out and we can use a shop vac. Since we don't have a drain going to the exterior where we could usually use our shop vac, so hopefully you learned something in today's video. Let me know if you did learn something. Hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. Let me know in the comments if you did learn something, what it was. If you have a question, remember questions can become content. I'm really glad that you're here. If you're a viewer, if you're a subscriber, if you're a member, thank you so much. Hit the like button, subscribe, and smash that bell. Ding! So you know what I'm doing. If you need help with your project, you need tech support, I have membership levels. Go check it out. You want my email? Become a level one member. If you want my phone number? Become a level four member. If you want to see all my members only videos and learn more about HVAC, like duct sizing, equipment pricing, equipment sizing, HVAC sales training, geothermal training, definitely go check out my membership levels. Become a member. Thank you so much. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.